AMN Drive Time is sponsored by Aishin, your trusted and reliable source for aftermarket automotive components and technology. Visit AishinAftermarket.com for more information. Matt, welcome to AMN Drive Time, sponsored by our good friends at Aishin. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Glad to have you. We're, we're doing AMN Drive Time on the road. We're in Las Vegas at Napa now yep. in the middle of April. And how's the show going for you? It's going actually really well. Uh, we've gotten a lot of positive feedback. Uh, it's really nice to look around your customers. They all have smiling faces. They tell you how much they appreciate the show and then how much they're getting out of it. Yeah, it's got a good vibe from our standpoint. Oh, absolutely. The team's, good, team's done an excellent job. Good energy. Yep. So Matt, for the, for the benefit of our audience, talk, talk to us about your career. Where, like, what did you do from age 18 on and how did you find Napa? Wow, so uh, day, well, I started out as a technician. Uh, I worked for just over 15 years as a L1 master tech. Uh, most, probably 70% of my career was in Napa Auto Cares. Uh, I'm a third generation Napa guy. Uh, so my grandfather was a battery rep. My dad retired 40 years from Napa last year. Your, dad, your grandfather was a battery rep? Yep. Wow. My father was a battery rep. Um, I started my career after being a technician and I came over as a trainer for Napa uh, for electrical training and sales training. Uh, ran the curriculum development for Autotech for a while. Um, and then now my son, who's 22 years old, just got hired at Napa. So that's the fourth generation really? at Napa Auto Parts. Yes, sir. Fantastic. Yeah. Are you from Greater Atlanta? I was originally uh, grew up right outside of Birmingham and okay. uh, moved to Atlanta because of my mom's job with IBM and probably think summer of 93 and then I've been in Georgia ever since. One of our co-workers who's here, maybe you'll meet him tonight, he's a, a co-worker of ours, he's a master tech. Okay. We have three ASC certified techs on our team and one is a master tech. Excellent. And uh, you and he would have a lot to talk about. Oh, I'm sure. So. Uh, why don't you talk about some of the auto care programs you're involved in for the 18,000 plus Napa auto care centers across the U.S. and kind of what's going on in your world related to that? Well, uh, in my job role, I kind of handle all partnerships, program development. Some of the, you know, we have some cornerstone programs, which is, uh, you know, we have a couple of uh, providers on our DVI uh, payment systems. Of course, Napa Tracks is one of our best partners internal yeah. with our shop management system. Uh, but we do get into things, uh, I think, even on our member site, which we don't really consider that a program. It's an enhancement. But this is where we have a lot of good things coming on to where our members can go on and get information. Uh, we're changing that experience. Our new rebate structure, our team tool rebate that we just rolled out is probably the ones I'm most proud of here recently. Uh, and then, of course, our XR training program. Sure. Talk about the rebate program. So on a rebate, you know, for 41 years, Napa Auto Care has been around a 4% rebate and it has not changed. And we realize that, you know, as things change and the competitive market is always fluid, we had to make some changes based on feedback from our Auto Care Council, other Auto Care members that uh, have given us a little bit of feedback of what's been going on in the, in the field. And we went to a tiered system, three, five, seven. Mm -hmm. So that's their volume rebate. And then we added an additional rebate called the team tool rebate. And that team tool rebate means that through the year, they can start to earn up a rebate that they can then turn around and give to their technicians so they can buy tools and knock down that barrier of entry for a lot of our young technicians that kind of find that a little bit of a challenge early on in their career. Um, and this also creates a fantastic recruitment and retention program for our auto care centers. Do they have to buy a certain kind of tools? No. 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 So okay. when they go, they go to Napa, you know, it's Carlisle tools. It can be Milwaukee, okay. things like that. So our biggest thing is, is one to fill that need, but also drive traffic to our Napa auto care or our Napa stores. Yep. And then our stores and those technicians and not just the shop owners can build healthy relationships. Got it. So you mentioned that when you started your career, you were in training, you were a trainer for Napa, right? Cause you went from yes, being sir. a tech to being a trainer. So, so in what areas do you see the most pressing need for training so that today's techs are ready for the emerging technology service opportunities? And just in general, just talk about, you know, what do they need to be doing to get ready for the future and just in general about the value of training? You know, it, if you would have gone back maybe 10 years ago, I would have answered that a little bit different. It's always going to start probably one of the 
biggest fundamental things that leads into emerging tech is electrical. You have to have a basic understanding of electrical and how electrical systems work. But now when you look at like uh, ADOS calibrations, you also have to have a good basic understanding of alignment angles. So all of a sudden, emerging technologies are still built on the fundamentals, even though they seem complex. So I think it's focusing on fundamentals. Don't forget those, but I would say alignment, steering, suspension, even, even engine mechanical, but electrical seems to be the most top priority that they need to learn. Talk to me about ADOS. Well, I have, uh, have a lot of experience with ADOS. Uh, I had uh, two and a half years where I left Napa and came back and uh, I was sales director for Alltel Diagnostics for ADOS. Sure. Um, it is, I think, one of the most exciting emerging techs. It's uh, also the fastest growing, even over EV, because of the mat matter of, or, or the amount of saturation in vehicles. Um, it is very lucrative. We have a lot of our auto cares that have invested in that, and they have gotten their ROI extremely quickly. Uh, we even have one of our former council members that it's now 20% of his business. Really? Is this a repair shop or a body shop? It's a repair shop. Because a lot of that action's at the collision shop too, right? It does, but what we did find out is a lot of collision shops, just the same way that they find repair challenges, yep. that they sub those repair, me mechanical repairs out. Right, They're yep. doing the same thing with ADOS. Okay. So our auto care centers are taking uh, a great opportunity to be that central expert in the market. And actually a lot of that business comes from the wholesale side, from shop to shop. They're going out and partnering with uh, body shops and other shops that may not have the space or the means to do it. Yep. And it's becoming a kind of a centralized hub. And it's been extremely beneficial for our customers and for Napa. Will the uh, repair shop go to the body shop, pick up the car, bring it back, do the ADOS procedure and then drive? So they, is it turnkey for the body shop? It can be. I think it depends on the relationship and the needs yeah. and, and how that shop maybe negotiates. I think every market's going to be different. I've seen it in all different ways. Uh, I've seen to where the, the repair shop is doing the, the lifting and the transporting. I've seen the body shop do the same thing. Yeah. And I think it also, also depends on the condition of the vehicle. Some of those conditions could be that it's not calibrated, it's not safe to drive. Oh, right. It may need to be transported on a flatbed or something. Sure. Yep. Yeah. Do you still need only brick and mortar to do it, or can you do it? Is there a more efficient way to do the ADOS procedure? You know, there's... You need white walls and flat floor and a, you you know, know, a full gas tank and the tires perfectly inflated. It's, it's going to be different because you always want to make sure that you're adhering to the OE specifications of how that procedure should be done. Yeah. The good thing is, is if you look at the equipment manufacturers, they've made leaps and bounds in camera technology. Yeah. So all of a sudden, extremely flat floors are not always required. The camera technology with pitch and roll adjustments on, yeah. the, uh, on, the, on the sidebar that literally you can kind of compensate for that. Sure. Lighting is always going to be a big issue. Yeah. And, uh, and of course, even mobile people doing it outside is probably not the best thing. Right. So you can be mobile, but usually you're traveling to a body shop and doing it in their facility. Um, brick and mortar is was kind of like, no, we don't want to do brick and mortar because there's so much space. A lot of people went mobile and then they realized brick and mortar is a, a controllable space. Yeah, so is. we've seen this kind of adjustment back and forth in the industry. Sure. So talk about the, the masterclass here at Napa now. And, and, and any exciting announcements, anything related to AR, VR, we'd love to, I'm sure our audience would love to hear about that. We have, uh, uh, Napa has, has, has an extreme partnership uh, as we go down this kind of virtual reality. We call it extended reality because it's actually a mixture. You have virtual reality, augmented reality, and then overlaying that on actual hands-on fundamentals. Um, so we call that Autotech Accelerator. It's being demoed right now on our show floor. And uh, I can tell you this, that that is just the tip of it uh, as we look at that entire program of how we do assessments, how we do training, and then how we also do support. Um, we're extremely excited for that. We've got a lot of work to do still um, because it's very complex. It takes a lot of man hours to put the production in. Uh, and I don't know if y'all saw the announcement to where ASC came out at our master I class. And I, w I was at that class. I went yeah, to it. That was, uh, that was something that kind of developed in a short period of time, but we're very appreciative of ASC's partnership and also 
their confidence in that platform. So um, we're very excited that ASC decided to endorse that and, and kind of make a pretty big announcement. Yeah. Were you involved in that whole that process of putting that together with ASC? Uh, we're always involved to where between Robin uh, from Skillmaker, uh, Napa, and then of course Dave Johnson over at ASC. So it was kind of a, a joint effort, but uh, really I think Dave Johnson's vision and, and believing in what uh, we've built over here is what kind of uh, spurred that up. Sure. So Matt, talk to me about extended reality training. Does this take the place of traditional training? Is it a whole new thing or it'll be both of them or how will that, how will that play out? We look at it as this is an enhancement to our current training model. Uh, auto tech training is industry leading. I believe it to be the best in the industry. We have some of the best trainers, development team, and you look, actually, the extended reality works perfectly with our auto tech department because we have industry-leading mock-ups, a lot of hands-on, and that extended reality doesn't work as well without our mock-ups. So it was the perfect marriage. It enhanced our ability to train young people at an accelerated rate so they can get the best return on their career. But also, we talk about the technician shortage. Yeah is it's not just that we have a shortage is even if we had every technician needed today it would take two to three years to get them up to speed right. to actually be efficient if we can cut that down and f backfill those roles then we've solved a major issue in the in the industry and of course with autotech and xr that is the perfect match and what what was that they showed a slide today at that at that master session what were they talking about for 25 days now Yes, so our two-year apprenticeship program, yes. that we can get that down to 25 days in our accelerator program. Is that real? It is. And I was, being a former technician who was diehard about everything has to be hands-on, and also I knew how long it took for myself in my career to really start to grasp everything in the light bulb to go off. I was like, it took me years. I was like, there's no way to actually really experience it and then you see the science behind it and then you see the data and how it's proven. It took me one trip through that demo and I said, I'm, I've been totally wrong. And then you get to see the data and the more I am involved in it, the more I'm a firm believer. And I would challenge anybody that is just like myself, that's been a master tech, that's been in the industry, that's been a trainer, that is more traditional than anybody else, that I can show them the data and everything to say, this is for real. So let me ask, are you, do you still work on cars? Uh, I do. Uh, my wife would probably like me to work on her car more than, than I don't, right. but uh, instead of having to take it to a shop, but travel and everything else, uh, I do miss it. Uh, even though I love my job, I had some of the best relationships, best friendships, best times of my life were in a shop under the hood of a car. So I right. still miss it. I still have my 11 foot toolbox in the garage though. So, you know, technicians, we don't get rid of tools. We just right. keep gathering collecting tools. That's right. So I still that, I, you know, still into cars and motorcycles and everything else. So that, that never goes away. So it is tradition, uh, Matt, on AM and drive time to do something called lightning round. Okay. And I'm going to ask you some questions, and you okay. just give me a quick answer. Absolutely. You ready? I'm ready. All right. What's the most adventurous thing you've ever done? Wow. Uh, I, uh, Go to Costa Rica for a wedding? Oh, uh, close, close. <laughs> God, I hope my parents don't hear this. I actually <laughs> rode a motorcycle off of a stone wall into, uh, onto the street, and it was probably about like a 15-foot drop. Oh, I was great. 17 years old in high school. <laughs> so, sorry, Mom and Dad, don't, don't, don't listen. They don't know about that, They, huh? they do now. <laughs> Were you sober? Uh, partially. <laughs> <laughs> sober enough. That, that's right. Sober enough to realize that it was probably not a good decision. But, yeah, it was, that was probably the craziest thing I've done. Yeah. What is one important skill you learned while attending the Chattahoochee Technical College in Marietta, Georgia? Yeah, I went to uh, tech school there. The one thing I came out of that is your education's never done. And if you want to succeed, you have to constantly be a student. That's the one thing I learned. Yeah, lifelong learner, right? We oh, hear absolutely. it all the time. Absolutely. Right? Especially in the automotive aftermarket. It's like this conversation we had about ADOS, right? Always changes. No one changes. thought about that 10 years ago. Oh, it's always Maybe changing. not even five years ago. Yeah, that's what also makes the industry exciting. Yeah. yeah. 
you work your tail off. How do you, what is your key to work-life balance if you have that? My wife would say I don't have that. She would, um, okay. I, I think part of it is, is I would have to give credit to my wife. Um, my wife, Jennifer, is the one knows that I have a little bit of obsessive personality when it comes to my work. Yeah. Um, I, and I do. It's because I'm very passionate and I love it. She's my, she's my anchor that says, you need to pull back a little bit. Yep. You're getting a little too much in that. And I listen to her and I pull back and she kind of gets me centered until I run off the rails again. But uh, all that credit goes to her that I have any type of enjoyment outside of work as far as work-life balance. It's because she, she makes that happen. Matt, thanks for being on AMN Drive Time, sponsored oh, by Aisha. Oh, thank Asia. you. I appreciate it. Thank you.